Hey guys, um, had a few things happen lately. One was the firing of Anthony Scaramucci, which upset me tremendously. But I was amazed at the support Trump had from his uh, low information base and some others for that. They thought Scaramucci was a loud mouth and ignorant. They didn't realize that Scaramucci is a fighter and a genius. And yeah, he made a terrible mistake saying what he did about Bannon. And so be it. He's fired now. There's nothing we can do about it. I'm not going to cry over spilled milk. I think it's going to be impossible that the next... I, 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 um, I think it's very highly likely that the next communications director we see is going to be a neocon, never Trumper. That's what worries me. Uh, the other thing I'm going to talk about is I'm turning into a real pro-Russia advocate. It won't be long and they'll be calling me a Russian agent. And I'm mainly doing it because not enough people are talking about it. Here we have uh, the United Kingdom, France, Germany, prosecuting their own citizens for speaking out against a sworn enemy, Islam. An enemy who has openly on national TV, on worldwide TV, declared they, that we are their enemy and they want to kill us and they want to... to become the majority population and harm us. And if you speak out against that, then these people are harassed, arrested, and prosecuted. That is a much bigger crime than Russia possibly fiddling with our election, which we still have no evidence of. And Russia taking over, a uh, annexing Crimea, uh, or Crimea and G invading Georgia, mostly areas that wanted to be Russian, where the people should have had the choice anyway to become Russian. And then Saudi Arabia, women can't even drive, and they're extremely oppressive and kill people for speaking out. Mark Zuckerberg helps Pakistan catch some guy for dissenting against the government. I mean, these crimes are massively bigger and more important than anything Russia has done. And now Russia, uh, Trump is talking like he is going to sign these Russian sanctions in. And I think he's really been convinced by uh, globalists like McMasters, you know, possibly Kelly. I'm not sure where Kelly stands on that. I know that he is uh, pro securing this other border and pro uh, fighting terror, but. I, I'm pretty, he's probably a Russiaphobe. Most of our old generals are. They're terrified of Russia. They spend their entire life fighting Russia. And it's not as easy as Russia changing as trying to become better. There's a deep hatred for Russia. So many of these older people, which I'm 40 years old, but so many of these older people, I can change my ways when presented and my views when presented with evidence. But so many of these people in Washington, D.C. have had this hatred for Russia from when they were kids hiding under their desks in fear of a nuclear attack that they don't care what Russia is doing now. Plus some of them just like war. So we have a big, we, we have a lot of things going on right now. I really am just here to talk about the fact that of course I still support Trump. I'm very frustrated that he continues to hire deep staters, neocons, people that I feel like are anti-American. They may not all be, and other people would probably argue with me, but from what I've seen, they have an anti-American message. It isn't 100% pro-America, damn the cost. And that's what a true nationalist believes, is it's country first, and then we'll worry about other things. And it can be country first, and other countries can still be benefit, benefited. I'm not to screw other countries over, but I don't understand this rage toward Russia. It, it is uncalled for, it is ridiculous, it's petty, and it's childish. And I, General Kelly, I, I just have no faith in the guy, you know? Maybe I'll be wrong, hopefully I'll be wrong, maybe he'll prove me wrong, maybe he'll at least be good administratively. But I just have a feeling that he's going to fill, his, fill the White House with more Never Trumpers, just like Johnny DiStefano De, De, De did, and all these other guys. And the guy in the State Department, 
this Brian, forget his last name, all these guys filling their, their, their positions with never Trumpers. And I saw a, a, a letter a guy had written and was, was, was placed in an article about how he had been on the Trump campaign in a swing state that narrowly won. And he wrote a letter of recommendation for some, child, for some college kids to get an internship in the White House and was ignored because the White House is full of never Trumpers. I don't understand why Trump doesn't realize he has one problem and one problem only. When you hire people that hate you, then you're gonna have lots of problems in your company, especially in politics. Now, if you're a corporation and you hire people that hate you, you're much less likely, for some reason they just kind of play along, but when it's politics, it's somehow more personal. You can't hire people that hate you. So that's my, what, that's what I want President Trump to hear from me and people like me, is don't hire people that hate you. Please try to hire people who are true populist nationalists that care about the people and stop these leaks in the White House. If you have loyalists in your White House, you will not have leaks or very few. Peace.